topic of my talk is science is sexy. Now, I know I said science is sexy. For 50 years, this was the face, for the last 50 years, this was the face of science. A wrinkled old man with a bad hair day. This is not a sexy scientist. This is a sexy scientist. Carl Sagan came along and Actually, this, is the, this month is the 30th anniversary of Cosmos. And Cosmos changed the way people looked at science. It brought science into the homes of billions and billions of people. And Carl Sagan, with his turtleneck, his nice shiny white smile, made science sexy again when it wasn't. And Carl Sagan had some challenges in those days because we were involved in a, a great nuclear holocaust possibility. There were 50,000 nuclear weapons spread around the world, and half the world's scientists were involved in one form or the other in nuclear weapons industry. They were all tied up. So Carl had a challenge to make science sexy and bring science to everybody, so he created Cosmos. Today we have a different kind of challenge. We don't have a Cold War anymore. The threat of nuclear holocaust is not as great. Well, the threat that we have comes from within ourselves. The people who live in America just don't get science. They don't understand science. They're not sure what it's about or the truth about many of the things in the world. For example, 40% of Americans think that the Flintstones were real. That people lived at the same time dinosaurs were and rode on their backs and things like that. So that, that's one of the problems. 53% of the population don't know that the Earth goes around the sun in 365 days. 53% of the population, when you ask them, don't know that figure. There's a whole bunch of people who think that the Grand Canyon was caused by Noah's flood because the Earth is only 6,000 years old, and that's how the Grand Canyon was formed. 51% of the population believes in UFOs. They're not, you know, thinking about the scientific aspect of it, that it could be a cloud like this. This is a real photo of a lenticular cloud. They believe in UFOs. The real challenge and the really upsetting part is some of our smartest people in the world don't know the simplest things about science. I'm going to show you a little film called A Private Universe that was made a, a decade or so ago in which they interviewed the graduating class at Harvard and asked them one simple question. Why is it hotter in the summer than it is in the winter? As the Earth travels around the sun, it gets nearer to the sun, um, which produces warmer weather and gets farther away, which produces colder weather. He's basically saying that the, what most normal people think. It's hotter in the summer because the Earth is closer to the sun in the summer than it is in the winter. And in fact, the real problem is that this, this gentleman graduated in physics and science, and he had all kinds of courses in earth mechanics, and he still didn't know that the reason it's hotter in the summer than it is in the winter is because the Earth's axis is tilted. If someone had said to him, well, well if it's in Australia it's winter time when it's here in the hot in the summer in the northern hemisphere, maybe he would have had to think about it. 90%, 90, 30 out of 32 people asked that question at the Harvard commencement got it wrong. And these are the people that are, you know, becoming our nation's leaders. Add to the fact that we now have a problem with science in the media. People are being fired in science positions all over the place. Miles O'Brien and the whole crew of science and technology people were fired from CNN. The New York Times, which owns the Boston Globe, the Globe killed its health and science section. They still kept the reporters on, but there used to be 70 big science sections. You know, the science sections like the Science Times in newspapers around the country. There are hardly a handful of them left. What's really interesting is that this happened at a time when science now is becoming sexy again. It's becoming more popular than ever was. This is a Pew Research study asking people, what topics don't you get enough of in the news? And at the bottom of the list, actually representing the biggest answer, 44% of the people said there's not enough news about science news and discoveries. We've got plenty of news about the other stuff, but you're not covering the good stuff that we want to see, science news and discoveries. And in fact, on Science Friday, here's the list of our podcasts, you can see that in all of NPR's podcasts, Science Friday ranks third among all of us. A science show on one day a week is the third most podcast of all of NPR. 
Now you'll see right above us is wait, wait, don't tell me, which I'm sure you're familiar with. Your challenge tonight is to tell everybody you know to download the podcast of Science Friday because we want to get right above that guy by next week. So if you're in the sound of my voice, download Science Friday and we'll try to see if we can overtake wait, wait, don't tell me. What's most interesting is that science is coming up from the ground roots. Science is becoming sexy again in popular culture. Here is one of the most popular shows on CBS. It's the Big Bang Theory. It has real science in it. In fact, one of my favorite topics is that we were asked to appear. Science Friday had a guest from the Big Bang Theory. Sheldon was asked to appear on Science Friday, and we became part of it. Let's see if I can show you. In fact, the night that, that we were on, the Big Bang Theory beat out two and a half men for the first time in the history of that program. Hey, Koopa, I hear you're going to be on the radio with Ira Fuedo from Science Friday next week. <laughs> Thank you, Kripke, for depriving me of the opportunity to share my news with my friends. My pleasure. <laughs> and we were on, and I actually, if you see the rest of the program, he, he, Sheldon was, a, was a making an appearance on Science Friday. So there's science showing up all over the place now as science is becoming more sexy. In film, Flash of Genius with Greg Kinnear, big movie stars are taking science roles. On Broadway, you can watch Hank Azaria play the part of, uh, of, a, of, an, uh, of an RCA mogul in the Farnsworth invention, talking about the invention of television. We also have them showing up in Off-Broadway. Here, here is an EST theater, Ensemble Studio Theater production, that's going to be coming out soon. And this is about the discovery of DNA from Rosalind Franklin's point of view, the woman who really did not get as much credit as she should have. Here's an here's a Off-Broadway play called Frequency Hopping, having to do with Hedy Lamarr, involved in science and creating technology. What, what do you see about the theme here is that women, women are becoming known to be involved in science. And in fact, women are becoming, girls and women are getting to be, well, better known than men as being interested in science. This year's winner of the Intel Science Talent Search, along with four other finalists, are women. They're showing up again in science. You know Danica McKellar, she's a, familiar, she's a familiar TV actress to you. She has moved into mathematics. She's writing books about algebra, about other kinds of math. Here's her latest, Hot X Algebra Exposed. We have, uh, Debbie, Ber Be we have Debbie Berbiches, who's a physicist, who's writing a blog on, on the web called Science Babe. And uh, the ultimate symbol that science is hot among girls is this year's Barbie. This is what the girls themselves chose, that they want to see Barbie, a computer geek. Here's a picture of Barbie. She has a little earphone on. She's got her laptop. And she's also got sensible shoes on. Because Barbie, can you imagine? And the girls picked the computer geek themselves as the doll they wanted to see that won the contest. Here's the 4-H's involved. You thought the 4-H store, you know, worked with cows and hooves and horses. They had a science week last week, last week where there was a national science contest for kids in schools. Rock bands. Kids are joining rock bands, punk bands. Here's a punk band that features on his T-shirt, Science Rocks. Here's an actual rock band that's doing performance art with electric Tesla coils, bringing science into their arts. Science is showing up everywhere. And the people are going to inventor fairs. Here's a, the maker fair that appeared in New York last week. It goes around the country. There are inventor fairs everywhere. And we're going to need these inventors because we have all kinds of problems that we face. They're going to need that to be solved by people who are still interested in science. Which brings me full circle back to this first slide of Einstein. If you look at that slide, you, I, I mentioned before that uh, this is the old rendition of Einstein. And if you say, I can't be that Einstein, don't expect me to. Well, he really can't be that Einstein either. Because the real Einstein was not that old guy. The real Einstein was this guy. And if you look back 100 years, you can see that like now, 100 years ago, science was sexy. Thank you very much for your attention.